Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and this isn't going to be a review and it's going to be one where I'm going to have to choose my words incredibly carefully. Um, but this is something that I've, uh, I've been thinking about uh, for a little while. Did I really need to be getting involved with this situation? Um, and uh, I'm going to need to give you a little bit of background info first about how things have uh, kind of progressed over the last week or so and then yesterday stroke last night certain things happened on Facebook and it kind of left me personally without much of a choice as far as I was concerned in the way that I uh, feel about what I consider to be something very very close to me and that is the way that the uh, industry works. And although I've not got any massive say in the way stuff happens, I'm certainly allowed to express my feelings and my thoughts about certain things that have, you know, have happened, are happening within the market and kind of express my um, dislike for it is probably the best way that I can really put it. Um, so, if you're wondering what I'm on about, if you've not looked at the title already, it's the whole kind of debacle that's going around with uh, Thermal Take at the moment and the way that their products look incredibly similar to a lot of others. Um, in that uh, it's not kind of just one thing, there's a lot of bits that have happened over the last few weeks, let's say, where you can see some striking, striking similarities, we're going to put it, and I'm trying to be as politically correct as possible, and I could use much harsher words if I really wanted to, but we're going to say similarities to try and keep things neutral. Hmm, there's a strange one for me to be saying. But anyway, so, there, about two weeks ago, uh, one of my colleagues said to me, because I've, uh, I've actually got someone that's uh, working in the office with me full time now, and you will see them in the not too distant future when things start to settle down and we get moved into the new office. But anyway, so they sent me a picture and they said, what do you think of this new case? And I basically, this was the picture that they sent me. And I, I kind of, well, I said, I didn't realize Fractal were releasing a new case. I thought we'd had the R5 and the Define S. So I, I didn't, you know, and I, I work quite closely with Fractal, so I wasn't aware of anything that was meant to be coming out new. But then he turned around to me and he said, hmm, yeah, that's not a Fractal case, Tom. That's a thermal take. And I was like, what? No, 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 that's got to be... Because the, the front, it just looks... I was like, it's just a black R3 or an R4 and R5. No, no, that is a thermal take. And apparently it's called the Suppressor F51. Um, and it, that kind of it put a bit of taste in my mouth. It was just, it was... It was far too similar, is probably the best and kind of most neutral way that I can really put it. And I mean far too similar. But then all the big stuff started happening, uh, we'll say yesterday, and this is all going on at Computex at the moment, and there is a lot of information going on around in the backgrounds, but they launched a new range of cases. Now, I'm going to tell you, when I first saw the pictures, on Facebook, I'm going to give you my instant reaction. This was what I thought when I saw it, okay? So these are my thoughts and this was my instant reaction on, you know, what happened when I saw the pictures. And I was like, wow, wow, they're, uh, they've got an OEM deal with Case Labs. And I honestly thought that they'd um, either license the design from Case Labs or Case Labs were making cases for Thermal Take, and Thermal Take were just putting their uh, badge on the front of the, the case. A bit like what you would see with power supplies and things like that. Sorry, we had the printer go on a, a mental one. So uh, it's very similar to what people do with power supplies. And uh, th uh, that you have like OEM brands and then companies like, let's say, XFX will buy a Seasonic kind of uh, base and then they relabel it as their own. Or you have like Superflower, they sell designs to EVGA and the high-end EVGA power supplies are um, Superflower designs. So it's not unheard of in the industry to have an OEM. 
And essentially, the reason why I thought that is all of the proportions, the grills, uh, the windows, and all that type of stuff looked right. And I'll bring a picture up. This is the picture uh, that's been kind of bouncing around on Facebook, and it kind of puts the two side by side. Now, with the case labs on the right, it's the unbuilt one. It's not got the extra large window on it but the, uh, they do do an extra large window where the, the, ple the plexi goes right the way down to the front. Uh, and the only real difference I could see in this image, and I mean like a big instant straight away that I noticed the image, is that the handle was slightly different down on the far right hand side of the window. So right near the front, you can see it's got a slightly different window. Now obviously I've not had the, the, the Thermaltake version in my hands, but I've spent a lot of time with the case lab stuff. I've had several of their cases in and I'm an, a, a big fan of the case labs design because case labs kind of took the the basic kind of aluminium kind of design of the old MM style cases which I kind of um, put down to being almost like a school project type of thing and they took the aluminium design they took it into the future they put a completely different twist on it they made everything modular uh, and they made everything kind of quite big and very, very water cooling friend friendly. Um, now, uh, you can see that there are some striking similarities between the case lab and the thermal take. So we've got that kind of bit out of the way, but this is when things start to get darker and more stuff starts to come to the surface where we, we found out that um, one of the Thermaltake team had seen like an initial launch of a case lab case and was so impressed with it, they asked if they could take loads of pictures of it. Then case labs obviously turned around at the show and said, you know, you're from another, you know, kind of competitor. We're not particularly comfortable with that. Um, and then they just kind of apparently on the spot just turned around and went, well, we'll just buy one then. And the, the worrying thing is, is case labs have got the um, receipts that show a selection of Case Labs cases being bought from Thermal Take um, uh, web addresses, um, so their email addresses, and then going and being sent to Thermal Take HQ, which is something that is kind of like, well, okay. And again, we can stay politically correct and neutral on this, and a lot of um, manufacturers will purchase and look at other manufacturers designs not necessarily to rip them off but to uh, see what the competition are doing and that's obviously you know you want to keep your finger on the pulse you want to see what's going on it's not just for reviewers people like me to be able to get a feel for all these different things um, but obviously you don't then want to uh, get to a point where your designs are so similar to another brand that you can't particularly tell the difference and I think that's the point that um, is really sticking in my mouth more than anything. It's no matter what they say, if a design is so close to another one that you can't tell the difference, then, but it's actually made by two completely separate companies, where do you draw, where do you draw the line on this stuff? Now one thing I am going to say is I'm, I'm giving you all of this information now and I'm trying to stay as neutral as possible so that you guys can make your own mind up. And if you follow the link underneath, we've actually started a poll on the OC3D website, which I urge you to go and take. And I really do urge you to go and take. You've got three choices, and it's basically, um, uh, well, you can go and look. It's essentially, yes, it's copied, no, it's not, or, you know, yes, it is, but I don't particularly care. So you've got three very clear choices there, because... I mean, we've got our thoughts, but we actually want to see what everybody else thinks. And the other thing that is kind of really kind of striking home to me with this is um, a lot of the uh, professional modders and people within the industry, um, and I'm not going to name any of them because I don't want to drag them into something that I'm going to create, because I know that by making this video, I am going to open a kettle of fish that's probably going to keep me awake at night for weeks. But there's a lot of modders out there, and I mean um, people that we would all aspire to be. And I mean high-level modders that I personally even look to them as being like, you know, the, the, the work that they do is absolutely amazing. But then we've also got the confusing part where manufacturers, not necessarily case manufacturers, I might add, although there are a couple, 
are looking at this with a very kind of like disapproving look in their eye as well. And again, I'm not going to quote them, but I've had the conversations today because I've done a lot of research on this before I decided to make the video to kind of gauge the, the reaction of everyone. But we wanted to make this video so that you, you out there can tell us what you think. Um, now, I know that, you know, there's going to be a lot of hoo-ha about this. So we're just going to put it out there and let it go. But it doesn't really end with this. It really doesn't. There's a lot of things that, they're, they're, that, that have happened recently um, that now when it all comes to the surface, it's just really kind of not in the interest of where the market should be going. I mean, like I said, if you end up making the same as everybody else, you're going to have no differentiation for your brand. Uh, other than, you know, oh, that's the thermal take looks like that. And oh, that's the thermal take looks like their one. And oh, that's thermal takes version of that. And I personally, I, you know, maybe if that's what they want to be like, then fine. But that, that almost seems to me like you're kind of praying. And I, I'm, by praying, I mean, you know, like taking advantage of people that don't know any better and they don't realize and they think everything's new, unique and that's theirs. And I don't particularly think it's right. And it's almost like the naughty kid in a classroom that's copying homework. It's, it, yeah, it just doesn't sit well. But there, there's a couple of things I want to point out as well. A lot of manufacturers now, especially water cooling manufacturers, are moving away from glycol coolant. Um, uh, Thermal take uh, actually actively marketing their glycol coolant still. And it's like toxic and it can eat hose. Now it's not going to eat um, PTEG hose which is uh, where the, the, um, uh, like the rigid tubing is going. But I don't, I've not been able to find any warnings anywhere of it being you know, bad for other hoses. I think it's the acrylic stuff it can react with. Their radiators, I've been able to find all aluminium radiators made by Thermal Take, which is a kind of, that's a, a, that's a problem. If you've got aluminium and you anodize it, the anodizing acts as like a barrier so you don't get any problems with galvanic corrosion. But I have to admit, I've not seen aluminium bare used since very, very early Zalman days. And I'm talking probably like eight, maybe ten years ago that I've really not seen aluminium used to this extent. And it's, it's a cost cutting measure because it's copper costs a fortune. And if you start using this stuff, it's really not going to be great for you. There's a, a Swift Tech block that I've seen where there's almost, an, like I said, you can see um, some striking similarities between a, a, a Swift Tech block. Um, I've actually got a list of it here. There's a Swift Tech block, uh, the Apogee XL, and then there's um, a, a strikingly similar Thermal Take one. Um, and, but one of the most worrying things that I've seen, and this is from, like I said, a water cooler's point of view, uh, whereas, you know, I've done a lot of water cooling in the past. I like water cooling. I understand, you know, I really understand stuff. But there's, amazingly, there is what looks like a full cover um, uh, uh, Strix water block. And when you look at it, like I said, it looks like full cover. But it's only really covering the core and the memory underneath. But it doesn't touch any of the MOSFETs or, you know, like the heat. Um, and yes, OK, fair enough. When it comes to the 970, the, the, the power draw on them isn't massive. But to me, I mean, obviously they can reply to this and tell me, well, we've done internal testing and it doesn't matter. But it's water cooling and there's nothing touching the MOSFETs or anything at all. It actually covers it up. And so the, the airflow is, you know, any natural airflow in the case is going to be massively reduced anyway. Um, and if I'd spent 970, let's say 300 pound or, you know, I don't know, mate, I don't know what they cost in uh, the state. So let's say $350, $400 and you water cool it. Wouldn't you want your, the power regulators on your card, which let's face it, if you water cool, you're going to end up overclocking it. Wouldn't you want them to have some kind of active cooling? And it's all kind of, there's lots of these little things where I'm kind of, really, it's kind of, it's almost like they don't understand enough about what they're doing. And they're kind of, you know, like a massive company that's making stuff without any real consideration. Um, and I have to admit, a, a, a few months ago, I th kind of thought, my personal thought, I thought they kind of turned a bit of, um, you know, there'd, there'd been a change and I thought they'd taken a different path and it was going to be exciting times for Thermal Take. 
and I did really think that you know we might see a new era but I don't think this is the type of right new era that I had in you know that I'd hoped for I think it's probably quite the opposite I think rather than them making things better than they were in the past I think they've actually managed to make things worse so I mean that's my own personal opinion and I'm not um uh yeah, it, it, I, look, you can see I'm struggling now. So, essentially, I've given you my thoughts and opinions. Um, I, I've tried to word things very carefully because, like I said, there's a lot of striking resemblances between a lot of products um, and other manufacturers. So, um, I'm personally uncomfortable with how striking the similarities are. Um, so, what do you think? Are you happy with this happening? Would you like um, to see a whole range of uh, cases made by, so, you know, for argument's sake, you could end up with, and this is silly, but just to kind of put where my mind's at, you could end up with Corsair having a range of Cooler Master cases where they just copy the Cooler Master ones, and then Cooler Master do their versions of the Corsair ones, and then, then, then they all do versions of the Inwin ones, and then they all kind of spin around and everyone does a version of an Antec case as well. Is that really what we want? I'm certainly, you know, cer I'm certain that that's not what I want for what I would call the uh, industry and the uh, the community that I'm very passionate about, uh, and that's definitely not something that I'm going to promote or review or stand behind, or uh, yeah, or anything like that. So I'm here now saying this is something that makes me feel incredibly uncomfortable. And almost, I think, to be fair, I think you could go as far as to say it kind of almost, they're almost letting themselves down a bit here. They've obviously got some great engineers, um, and no matter where you get the design ideas from, you know, you do still have to take a design and put it through and get it manufactured. So all of that is, is in place. I don't see why you wouldn't want to make something completely unique and something that's completely your own so that you can actually then take pride in what you've produced and be able to stand behind it and say we've put so much time and effort into this we've done a lot of market research you know we've done this we've done that and it's a project that we've spent an awful lot of time on uh, and this is something we're proud and want to stand behind because i personally don't think with what i've seen over the last few weeks it's not something that i would ever be happy with doing or saying with it is at the moment and it, I, I think that they're selling themselves short that's personally what I think I think they've got everything there they just need to get some uh, I suppose you, you could say they need to get some inspiration from elsewhere but I think they really need to sit down and decide where they want the brand to go because at the moment you might as well just be photocopying um, uh, leaflets out of other manufacturers brochures and changing the logos on them and it's something yeah like I said it's something I'm not particularly happy with um, so yeah there's my thoughts uh, don't forget what I've said go to the link underneath we've got a poll there's a lot more information on the overclock 3d website as well because um, uh, we've done a big article on this because it's something that we feel very deeply about and like I said we're very passionate about our community and our industry um, and everything as a whole so from literally the companies at the top down to like the the, the, the professional modders and then down to us review sites you know trying to educate people and bring things to people's attention down to then what we would call um, the end users and whether you're a performance end user that knows pretty much everything about every product out there and could technically be a reviewer or whether you're um, a newcomer to the industry uh, and are just building your first PC or maybe looking to build yourself a console PC or something like that to go onto the, the Steam OS or you know something for your front room. It, it, this type of situation can affect everyone. So personally, I think it's time for everyone with a voice to stand up and air their opinions. Um, and uh, if you're not happy with stuff like this happening, say so click that poll, show your, your thoughts. If you don't like it, say no. It's completely, you know, you, you've not got to put your name to it or anything like that, so you can just be just a tick. Um, 
but you know this could be a chance for the 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 whole community and you know the whole industry to stand together as a whole and turn around and go yes we you know we disagree with this or actually you know we don't care so it's kind of choose where you are and let's all discuss it and get it out if you have um, some even stronger thoughts and opinions on this, please do join, join the Overclock 3D forums and join in the discussion on there. There's a lot of the regulars that I've actually been talking um, to on there um, about this situation. And it's basically the, the, the fact that this all come to a head and lots of people that I've spoken to uh, are, are not happy with this. Like I said, from you know manufacturers to modders, to end users, even retailers I've spoken to today are like, so that's not right. So um, that's it. We want to hear from you. We want to hear what you think. Comments, forums, poll, do the lot. Stand up. So if you if you feel strongly about it, I'm going to be quiet and leave you lot to uh, voice your opinions. Yeah, time for me to go.